This book is, has got a slightly wider shoulder at this end than this, and the hollow is going to only fit one way. So I just need to make a mark so that I get it round the right way. I'll just make a mark there and there. So that's the way it'll go down. This often happens with old books. Now, just one more turn. Over it goes. There's my mark, which relates to that one there. Piece of waste paper, and I'm just going to glue this part to that part, and that will create a tube, which is two thicknesses on one side and one thickness on the other. the tube. One thickness, two thickness. And it's the single thickness which goes down onto the book. That's why we call it a one on and two off hollow. I'm re-gluing the spine. My pen. There's my mark, so that's going down to that one. And now I align it exactly with the edge. Draw it tightly around the back. Give it a good rub down. surplus materials folded back. Again level with the edge. And then with a knife I just slit that off. out of the press. It's always as well when you put a hollow on just to put the book flat on the um, bench, push the, these boards up against the shoulder and rub it down right on the edge because that's where it tends to, to lift. Okay, now we can leave that to dry and look at the corners on the cover. We've just put the hollow on the book and now it's, while that's drying we can look at the, um, the board corners. Two of the corners on this particular book are quite badly worn. Both of them at the tail of the book where it's been rubbing on the bookshelf. So I'll repair both of those with some new material just inserted underneath the original. Now. At this stage, we've got to look at the type of material we're going to use. I'm extremely fortunate um, with this particular book because I've got a, a roll of um, cloth, which is almost 
well, I think it must be exactly the same colour. And it's quite thin. It's an art vellum cloth, which unfortunately you cannot buy these days. So um, it would be difficult to, uh, to find something exact. But I'm going to use that, but I'll show you what else you could use instead. There are three things you could use. You could find an old board and roll off the piece of cloth that was on it and then sand off the original um, board that's left on the back, if you can find one the same colour, that is. Um, like my pieces of end paper, I tend to collect odd bits of old cloth because um, they can become quite useful, quite valuable. Alternatively, you could find a cloth which isn't the right colour on one side, but on the reverse is very close. You could colour it again, so it's worth looking at that. But I've also um, experimented with Japanese tissue and lining it with fray knot, and it can give very, very good results. Um, this is um, Kozo tissue. Japanese long fibre tissue, very expensive but extremely strong. And this is just the ordinary fray knot. And what I do is I use a piece of plate glass, put reversible PVA onto the plate glass, put the fray knot down onto the glass and then pick up a fine film of adhesive on it. And then I pitch that down onto the fray knot, like that. And then put it between two pieces of Melinex and put it into the press. After it's been pressed, I put it between blotting paper, two pieces of um, really thick blotting paper to dry out. And this is the finished result. Now, I can use that for rebacking. It's quite thin, it's quite flexible, and I can colour it either with watercolours or acrylics. These two pieces here, that one's been coloured with watercolour, and this one with acrylics. And it's extremely flexible because of the PVA I've used. And the colour doesn't crack at all. I can screw it up and do all sorts of things with it. So I could use an acrylic and mix it to match exactly the colour that I need to do the repair. Watercolour works just as well. And if I was just doing this corner here with this type of material, I would probably do the repair with the virgin tissue and then just colour in the exposed bits afterwards. Okay, but as I say, I'm very fortunate I'm going to use the uh, cloth which I've got to match. So I'm just going to cut a strip out because I'll use this for the spine as well, I'm allowing for a turn in. Take a strip off here. The grain of direction of the cloth runs through the roll, so it's very important that we've got that running head to tail in the piece we're going to use for the repair. So I'll just take a little strip off the edge here, which I'll use for the corners, and the rest I'll use for the 
by. Now I've got a, um, a smaller lifting knife. This is an artist's palette knife, again, which is rounded at the end and is extremely thin and flexible, uh, which I use just for lifting the uh, material in the corners. on the inside as well. Just cutting round on the inside edge. And just ease that up. And then we can just lift up the, the cloth that's on the edge that comes up with the, the bit that's on the surface. And it, it's worn all the way along there, so I, I really need the piece of cloth to extend along the bottom edge more than it does up the fore edge. Now just taking care not to fold this over and crease it. Then we just take a piece of the repair cloth and just place that in. And cut it so that we've got a, a turn in of about a centimetre. Okay, it's a strange shape. Just cut that bit off there. And where, where we've got the corner, that wants to be one and a half times broad thickness away, just at that pinnacle there. Now, what I do here is I just hold that there and I can just mark where that cloth's going to go with just with the sharp bone folder. And then using a flat file, I can just file away some of the board surface, just, just to accommodate the thickness of the cloth, so that it doesn't show underneath the original. It's only slight because it's very thin cloth, but it's uh, just enough to take away the, the bump. So, it's with a bit of waste paper. And reversible PVA, we just glue out that piece of cloth. Fit it in. And when I'm doing any repairs on the cloth, I use a piece of um, clear plastic and put it over the um, original cloth, and then I can bone through it without damaging the original material, and I can immediately see if any glue squeezes out and stains the anything. I can immediately wipe it away. Okay. And then just got to lift this and turn it in. Turn the long edge in first. Just going to slip a little bit more, oops, a little bit more off there.
turn that in and then just pinch that in there bring this over and then that can go down it's just a little bit of board there which can just take away which will take up the thickness of that cloth that I've just put in and then we can put back all the original material If we have a, a, a corner on a board that's very weak, uh, it's been dropped on the corner and the, the board's delaminating, um, you can actually use paste and just rub into the delaminates of the board and clamp it with a, um, a, a bulldog clip or something like that, just while it dries and hardens off. But um, I usually find that just repairing it with a new piece of cloth, the adhesive from that is sufficient to um, stiffen it up. So that's pressing that round so it's all nice and square. And that's. Uh, that's the corner repaired. There's just some discoloration along here where the, uh, the cloth's worn, but there's still fabric there. Okay, once you've repaired all the corners, um, we can continue on and start putting the book back together again. First job, now the hollow's dry, is to slit it and cut it to size. But just like a new book, you've got to open this up properly, otherwise the book will be weakened at one particular point. So what I do is I just take a few leaves at a time, at the front and the back, and just work my way towards the middle to open it up. And then there we are, the hollows. See that opening up nicely. So while it's in that middle position, I just put my hand in and then I'm going to slit the hollow to accommodate the turning of the new material. So slitting it down about 15 millimetres, head and tail. Front and back. And then while it's still open, if you take the back part and just roll it off the book like that, and then the part that's sticking to the actual spine, just trim off flush. The same again at this end, just roll that out a half back and then trim the Hollow flush. Yeah. Put that back. And then we can um, put the boards back onto the book, making sure, of course, that we put the front board on the front of the book and the back board on the back.
And then just to set the squares, I'm just actually looking where the original end paper um, fits and putting the text block over that on the, on the board. So it's all back in its original position. And then this part of the hollow here, I'm going to cut flush with the boards. So it's slightly proud of the spine. We bring the finishing press back onto the bench. Just check everything's in line. Holding it quite firmly and pushing the boards up against the shoulder. And then I put the the book in. Now I can just open up the the board slot which I've paired in earlier. Just on both sides. Just ease it back a little bit. And then I want to cut this material so it, it actually fits into that slot and goes round onto the other side and does the same again. Uh, you have to allow a little bit for stretch. I mean, I would say a couple of millimetres. I'll cut that down to size. It's about 90. Turn in about 15 millimeters at the head and 15 at the tail. I'll just trim it a little bit off there as well. And just make try it again just for size. It should just go into the slot on either side. Okay, and a 15 millimeter turn. And then we're ready to um, to glue that out. Now the first thing you have to do is actually to apply. Uh, adhesive to this part of the board surface just into the slot and, and the whole surface area here which is going to be covered by the new repair cloth because if you don't do that if you if you just apply adhesive to the cloth and put it on you won't get any slip or slide to stretch it into position so it's a bit like sizing a very porous surface. So that's really what I'm doing at this point.
Okay, now we can glue the piece of cloth. I'm just going to slide that down into that board slot there and bring it round and then slide it down into the one on the opposite side. Getting it really nice and tight over the back of the book. down on the spine. doesn't matter about rubbing this direct because uh, we're going to put the original spine back on top of this so it's not going to be seen. Mm -hmm. and take that out of the press. give it a rub down on the surface here just making sure that slot's not sticking down on top of it so we want it to stay up for a little while okay now I usually leave that for a few minutes before I attempt to turn it in because there's a danger if you open the book up to turn it in down the hollow, the whole thing sp springs off. So we'll just leave that a few minutes. Okay, I've left that to dry now and uh, I can turn this in. Before I turn it in, I just want to take the sharpness off these um, corners. So I just take that corner off with the shears. It just makes it easier to turn in. I do that. Maybe trim that one down a little bit actually, it's a little bit long. I'm just going to apply some adhesive to the turning just to freshen it up. And again, just a little bit onto the surface of the board there, just to size it. Make sure it slips. And just let the book drop open in the middle. And then we can just turn that in through that. nice and tight over the edge of the board. Just lift this half of the book. Get the bone folder in and just work that round. And then just close it back up again. Right, and once we've finished both turn-ins, we can turn our attention to the board slot and putting that back down on top of the 
original cloth. So I'm just going to open this up. And then I'm just going to apply some PVA just inside that slot. And then using a bone folder, bone it down onto the new material. Just put the pressing board there so I don't want the original cloth to stick down just yet. So I'll just do the slot on this side. it down nice and hard once it starts to dry and bite into place. And then when that's dry, I'll probably give this five or ten minutes to harden off a little bit and sandpaper that down to get it nice and smooth so we can't feel a, a bump or ridge just through the original material. Okay, while that's drying what I can do is look at the original spine and we've got to remove all these old lining that's on the back and this is best done dry, don't wet it Peel off what you can. This is an old turn in at the bottom which we don't need so that can be broken away. And then if you've got any hard bits of uh, board or glue, just lightly sandpaper those away. And then any little frayed fibres, I'll just trim those off. I don't, I don't trim this square or anything, I just take off the odd fibres that are sticking out that will be a problem. That's okay, that's ready for us to put on.
then I can just start lightly sandpapering the top of the slot. Doesn't feel a ridge there at all, it should be absolutely on one level once we've just taken that slight bump away that's in the board where the cloth's gone underneath. And that's fine. Just repeat the process on the other side. start and put this cloth back down again now but there's still a few little fibrous bits there which I'll just um, I'll just snip off apply some adhesive underneath here and put this flap down. I tend to put it onto the board rather than the cloth in this first bit. Just finish off around the edges of the the cloth here. plastic and just put that on there and then just carefully just push this back and I can see immediately if there's any glue comes out and just wipe that away going around the edge of the board. It's 
still a little, few little frayed bits, but I'll, uh, I'll let that dry and then I'll trim those off. But that's gone down quite well. There's no hint of any bump there. So I'll just do the other side. Okay, I've uh, I put down both flaps now and just snipping off these odd fibres that are sticking out. And now we've got we can turn our attention down to, back to the to the inside now. So now we've got to put down the um, frame on.